Hello, this is Dr. John Lynch at the University of Washington School of Medicine, and I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes or so talking to you about infectious disease treatment principles. By the end of this module, you should be able to describe a basic approach to treating an infectious disease. You should be able to define empiric versus directed antimicrobial therapy. And then finally, you should be able to recognize the benefits of a combined medical surgical approach to specific infections. To get started, let's review the case of Irina, the young girl with orbital cellulitis. As you recall, this is a serious infection potentially threatening her vision and possibly her life. A number of tissues are often involved, including the sinuses, the periorbital tissue, and sometimes the cavernous sinus, or even the front of the brain itself. Urgent action is required, including antibiotics and sometimes surgery. So the question is, when Faced with a patient in your clinic, your emergency room, or your hospital, what are you going to do? A basic approach is going to be very helpful when thinking about all infectious diseases. One potential approach is the following framework. If we take a triangle and put disease in the center, we can add the host, the pathogen, and the antibiotics or drugs that we're going to use to treat the disease at each corner. When we think about the host, we have to think about the age of the patient. At the extremes of age, uh, certain infections are going to be more serious or more common. We want to think about exposures, including occupational, geographic, and sexual exposures. Immunosuppression, such as that experienced with bone marrow or solid organ transplant. And then those diseases associated with kidney disease or liver disease. When we think about a specific disease, we have to think about the organisms that are likely involved, including gram positives, gram negatives, anaerobes, whether the pathogens are potentially drug resistant based on the host history. And then often we don't even know unknown pathogens being in involved. And then at the third part of the triangle, thinking about the antibiotics we're gonna use, are they gonna penetrate into the tissues that are affected? Are they toxic? And what toxicities will they cause for the host? how we're going to get them into the patient intravenously or orally, and whether we're going to use directed or empiric therapy. Those terms empiric and directed are very specific. You can define empiric therapy as antimicrobial therapy based on the most likely pathogens involved for a given disease, and directed antibiotic therapy as treatment based on laboratory results. To be clear, you can't always get from empiric to directed therapy. Sometimes you never know what organisms are involved causing the disease, but if at all possible, this is the direction you want to head in. So when we think about the empiric approach to infectious disease treatment, we wanted to define the likely site of infection. In IRENA, we have to think about whether the infection is limited to the periorbital space, whether it's in the sinuses or the cavern of sinuses as well. We want to list the organisms known to cause infections at those sites. We want to evaluate the history of the patient for signs of anatomic or immune system abnormalities and exposures. For instance, has the IRENA undergone neuro or ophthalmic surgery that would change the presentation? And then finally, we want to take all that information and give antimicrobials that cover all likely organisms as early as possible. At some point though, we hope we'll be able to transition from empiric or best guess therapy to directed therapy or evidence-based therapy. If microbiological samples are obtained, purulence or pus, sputum, tissue, bacteria may grow and be identified in the clinical microbiology lab. The next question is, are these the causative organisms in this process? Sometimes bacteria grow, which may be colonizers in the same space and not true pathogens, and this has to be determined. And then finally, once you have that information, is it appropriate now to de-escalate antimicro antimicrobial coverage? Should we change from full spectrum best guessed empiric therapy to a single drug that treats the single infection. Those are gonna to be tough decisions to make and you wanna use all available data. At the time of transitioning to direct antimicrobial therapy, it's a good opportunity to think through a number of steps. You wanna make sure that the pathological process is indeed an infection and not some other process. You want to make sure that the drug you do choose, should this be an infection, is the one with the narrower spectrum so you don't inadvertently destroy all the other good bacteria colonizing the patient. When you choose the drug, you definitely want to choose the one that's least toxic. If there are treatment guidelines or 
data, you want to make sure that your treatment choice is consistent with that data or guidelines. If at all possible, you want to determine how long to treat the patient. This may be dependent on symptoms and recovery, but most infectious diseases are treated with antibiotics for far too long. You want to make sure the patient can or will take the medication should they be discharged or in the hospital. And then finally, cost. You should be treating the patient with the least expensive antibiotic that adequately treats the infection. When treating a complicated infectious disease, a multidisciplinary approach is going to be critical. The team approach is going to allow you to collect information and make decisions in the best interest of the patient. Nurses at the bedside are going to be the eyes and ears to determine how the patient's responding to treatment and should things turn in the wrong direction. Pharmacists will help with the determination of the best drugs. They're going to get to the site and treat that infection best. Therapists may be helpful, but finally, medical and surgical subspecialists will be key. In the case of orbital cellulitis, ophthalmic surgeons, otolaryngologists, pediatricians, and infectious disease doctors may be needing to work together. The combined medical and surgical approach is common in many infectious diseases. You have to remember, before antibiotic surgery was the only antimicrobial. Surgery often results in reduction in the organism burden and decompression of the infected area. Simple abscesses, such as found on the skin, can often be treated with surgery alone, an incision and drainage, and don't require antibiotics. I hope by this point you've be able to develop a basic understanding of an approach to treating infectious diseases. You can define empiric versus directed antimicrobial therapy. And then finally, that you're able to recognize the benefits of a combined medical surgical approach to specific infections. Thanks for your attention and good luck in the course.